Hello and welcome to the Australian Ghost Whisperer. My name is James Jennings and I am here with the Australian Ghost Whisperer herself, Katarina Legato. Katarina, hello. Hello, James. I'm excited to be here. Same, I'm very excited to be here. Now, I know you've got a lot of amazing stories to tell, which is why we're doing this series. Uh, and people may be wondering who we are. Um, a little bit about myself, I'm a journalist and writer. Um, I've written for places like Rolling Stone, Sydney Morning Herald, Empire Magazine, Disney, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but uh, Katarina, you've led a far more interesting career than I have. Let's, let's hear about what you do. Well, for the last three decades of my life, I've been a psychic, a medium, um, a healer, an exorcist. So I've been an all-rounder. That's quite a lot to have on your business card. Very busy lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, a pretty mind-blowing uh, lineup of, of job titles. <laughs> I feel very honoured and privileged for being able to do the work that I do and reach out to so many people yeah. and, and give them the help and assistance that they often need where as they would not be able to find this type of help and assistance really anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And uh, there's actually a, a whole story about how you and I met as well, um, yeah, which we'll save for a later episode because it's quite a tale. Uh, but today we're going to talk about your life and kind of go back in time a bit to when you first realised that you had this ability and that you realised that there was something beyond what we could see. So tell us about when you first realised that. I was a child. I remember going back to perhaps I was around three years old and um, at that time, my parents were just quite new from, from Italy, so we shared a house with another family and there was a ghost in the house. And this ghost was a very playful ghost. Mm. And um, he used to chase me around the house and I'd be running, running through the rooms in this circle. And he would giggle and laugh and, and, he, and we would just play games mm. because I was um, there, the, the only child in the house, I had no one else to play with, so I had this fun, friendly ghost that I would play and, and run around in circles with. Yeah. So that was lots of fun. Everyone, we were sharing with another family back then because my family had just come from Italy. So I think they used to look at me, you know, I think this kid's just running around and around <laughs> in circles all the time and there's something not quite right with her. But yeah, this, this ghost used to chase me and he used to make me giggle and he'd pull faces at me and um, it was just lots of fun. <laughs> That's amazing. What, what did it look like? Did it look like a, like a little kid or what he did it? He was um, a youngish man, perhaps back in, back there, oh God, probably in his 20s. Okay. Yeah, and I, back thinking about it now, I feel as though perhaps he may have lived in that house at one stage and died as a young man, mm. but um, his spirit was still in the house. Mm. And being so young, I think he just felt like, oh, I've got some company and I've got someone that um, can see me. And, um, and so we used to play and, and chase each other around the house. That's amazing. Yeah. So it's, when you say that you saw spirit around your family members, mm. how did you differentiate between like that there's a real person, mm. that person is from the spirit world? Like what? Obviously, um, you know, my, my family obviously was more physical mm. and when I see spirit there was a different um, energy about them, a different presence. They were much lighter, much um, more translucent okay. than a physical person. Mm. So um, I could always kind of see that there was always somebody with someone. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Like everybody would have some people hanging Almost around Almost everybody. Almost everybody has family members coming in and out to connect with them or perhaps they have spirit guides around them. Mm. Sometimes I would see around a lot of children, I'd see angels around them looking after them. Wow. It would just vary from person to person. And since you, I guess, yeah, this is like mind blowing, but since you saw this when you were a kid, I guess you grew up just thinking that this was normal. Absolutely. It was for me normal. Well, exa exactly, exactly. Yeah, here, yeah. It's, like, it's so normal for me. Yeah. I mean, well, it, I shouldn't infer that it's abnormal. That's very wrong of me. I, I apologise. But, but you know what I mean. Like, I like you, you, for you growing up with this, I guess I'm putting myself in the shoes of viewers who might be like, oh, my God, that sounds mind-blowing. But 
for you, it was just normal. It was just an everyday part of life. It's like, oh, yeah, there's yeah. people there and there's people there. And Absolutely. And it wasn't until I got a lot older, like when, once I got to about five, six years old, mm. I, I began to realise that people were not, you know, like my family members um, were not seeing what I was seeing. Right. So that's where I began to, oh, I guess I had my fears about what I was seeing, but also it was so fun. Yeah. It was so much fun. Like when I started school, I remember going to school every day and there was this man, he was in spirit mm. and he was very lost. And every day he'd walk up and down the playground and he looked so lost and sad. And I guess one day he realised I could see him. So he walked up to me and he was like, I'm so lost, I can't remember how to get home. And he was just so distressed. And I'm like, oh, I'd shrug my eyes, I don't know where you live. <laughs> and so every day he, he just began kind of waiting for me at the, at the gates of the school, because yeah. it's like, oh, here's this little kid, you can see me. And it's like, and he just would wait for me. And it's like, he'd always say the same thing. I'm so lost, I don't know how to get home. Do you remember where I live? Anyway. Many weeks went past and I just got fed up with this bloke waiting at the school gates for me every day. As you would. As I would. So one day I got to the school gates and there he was. I'm so lost. He'd just repeat the same thing to me over and over again because he was stuck in that moment of feeling so lost. Right. And that's what happens when you die. Sometimes if you don't cross over, you're actually lost and you keep reliving that moment over and over. Stuck in a loop. Kind of stuck thing. in a loop, exactly. So this day I was like, oh, I've had enough. And I just kind of looked at him and went, look, you are dead. You are just so dead. That's why you can't find your way home. <laughs> and he just looked at me and he was so afraid when I said that because somehow that truth kind of resonated to him. It kind of was like, oh my gosh, she's telling me I'm dead. She's brought up my biggest fear. I don't want to be dead. And anyway, he just ran and I never saw him again. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's pretty wild. Did any of the other kids see you yelling yeah, at this guy? Yeah, they just thought I was mad. <laughs> <laughs> Here's that kid who just talks to thin air all the time. Sometimes I'd get teased about it and sometimes, you know, I guess we were quite young and most of the time kids would just be mucking about with their friends and wouldn't take much notice of what I was saying yeah. or doing. But um, after a while it was, oh, there's that kid who speaks to, to the thin air and it was like you just let it go. Yeah. I mean, but they probably just thought, you know, it was an imaginary friend, which is pretty t similar. Like that's typical for that age, right? It is, it is, yeah. So that's how I got away with it in my younger years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And are there any other memories from your childhood that Some stand out? Some beautiful memories, actually. I... Um, where we lived, there was a big mulberry tree in the backyard and, and after school, I used to come home and I'd sit there really quietly. I guess back then I realised I was in like a bit of a meditative state and I remember just after a little while, the beautiful Aboriginal spirits would come through and they would just do all these amazing tribal dances and they had the paint on their faces and. And there was just such a presence of, of love and connection to the earth. I was absolutely fascinated by it mm. and overcome with, with just love and reverence for these people. They were just so peaceful and their dances and their movements. I was intrigued and I would sit there, I'm sure, for hours because I remember sometimes my mother screaming at me at night, where are you? Come in and have dinner. And and hours would be passed and I wouldn't even realise they, um, their spirit still very much connected to our land here in Australia. Mm -hmm. And um, they just lived in such harmony with each other and with the earth. Mm -hmm. And that's what I learnt, a beautiful That's amazing. Learning. Yeah, so young. Yeah. Um, because I guess, you know, growing up as... As an Italian family, it was all about just eating and screaming and very loud <laughs> and everything was a big drama. Yeah. But being able to sit and, and see their, their spirit and feel their love and their peace and connection was just such a wonderful gift. Mm. Mm. In terms of your parents, mm. did you ever try telling them about what you saw? 
as I got older, I began to experience um, nightmares. Okay. And this was because one, I was getting, I was older, so therefore my fear about the spirit realm um, was a lot more prominent. Mm. But um, I, I, I found myself connecting with a lot of the convicts mm -hmm. that had were brought here to Australia by force, mm -hmm. and they were very unhappy. And every night in bed, I'd hear, you know, the shackles and the chains, and I know they were coming. They were extremely distressed. That's so terrifying. Yeah, it was, and and they would just look at me and they'd show me and the, the bruises where the, the shackle was mm. around their ankle and their sadness and they would, you know, a lot of them were taken by force away from their homes. Mm. So this was a really sad time and um, it would just cause me to have bad dreams. So mm. I would fall asleep obviously and then I'd wake up like kind of in a cold sweat and I'd be like screaming. So. My mother back then began to understand that, yeah, something was going on with okay. me but couldn't quite understand it because back then it wasn't spoken of. People were not, you know, it's not like today where we're such more aware, more accepting of the spirit world. Yeah, mm. yeah, right. I can understand that. Mm. And, and, and what about your peers? Like, I mean, growing up, going to school, um, how much did your friends know about what you were going through and did you start sharing it with them at a certain time? With my friends, my closest friends, and I found myself growing up and being um, connected to certain friends that could, that I could open up to, that I could share stuff with. And obviously, you know, it was sometimes too much for them too yeah, because yeah. they were, you know, kind of 12, 13. But um, some of them really i th i feel tried to give me support and okay. and did truly believe me mm. and as i as we sort of progressed in through school i was always able to give them advice or give them a little reading without knowing like oh you know like i really like that boy and and i'd be like mm, no nah, he doesn't like you and then later they'd find out that that was how it sort of turned wow. out badly for psychic dating advice psychic dating or whatever it was yeah. advice about what was going on at home with their parents okay. and, and so they kind of this began to grow and they'd kind of be saying to each other, if you've got a problem, go to, to go to Katerina because she, she sort of knows somehow, she knows what's going to happen. So um, I did become quite popular at school, sometimes not so popular because often, you know, they were like, you know, you were right and, and I don't like it, you know, I'm, I'm really hurt by that boy or whatever you said, you know, maybe, maybe that's why it went wrong. So there was... Uh. Yeah. Yeah, you, you cop the blame for things going wrong. Yeah. So w because of, I guess, when difficult things like that would happen, was there a time when you tried, when you rejected it? Were you just like, I don't want to see all this stuff. I don't want to have anything to do with it anymore. I'm done with it. Like, was that something that happened to you? Definitely. Definitely when I got to 16, 17, I just wanted to be a teenager. I just wanted yeah. to go out. It was um, disco time and I wanted to go dancing and I didn't want to know about it. And I tried to block it off. And of course, spirits were still trying to communicate with me. So I was just ignoring them. I was just like, go away. I don't want to talk to you. Um, so that went on for a little while where I, I, I did manage somewhat to block it off. But of course, I could never really turn the switch off. Yeah. There was just no switch to to switch it off. Uh, did you did, did you ever encounter any spirits on the dance floor? Um, no, I don't think Can so. I was too busy dancing, <laughs> too busy having just, fun just back curious, there. Just yeah, just no. Any disco ghosts out there? no, no disco ghosts. Not okay. that I recall. Uh, uh, okay, so you understandably kind of like when you know. I'm just trying to be a young person. Yeah, I didn't want to be communicating with the spirit realm anymore. Yeah. I just wanted to be like all the other teenagers and have fun. Yeah, I, I bet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And did it? Um, the other thing I'm curious about as well is like, because for most people who are hearing about this, they're probably like, you know what? Oh, I'd be so scared if that happened to me. So like, were you frightened when this stuff would happen? Depending on who would show up. Okay. 
Sometimes some of the spirits were quite lovely and friendly mm. and some were quite frightening. So it would depend who would show up mm. and the way they would um, show themselves to me. Some were quite distressed and angry and upset. They felt that they had died before their time mm. and they couldn't accept that they were dead. Others were quite cheeky and fun and were enjoying running around scaring people and haunting people. So it would really depend. I did see um, lots of children. Children were very playful and would often, um, you know, try and hang out with um, their friends from school or perhaps um, families where they obviously died as young children. Mm. So they were always playful and they were always trying to cheer the mum and dad up because yeah. often parents lose their children. It's the most tragic thing. It's the most painful thing that I've ever had to kind of deal with is, is the grief of parents mm. losing a child. Mm. But often that child would come back from the spirit, would drop in and, and try and give a sign that they were okay or that they were happy or try mm. to cheer the parents up. So that was quite beautiful and I could see that, but often the parents were in such deep grief that they were not able to kind yes. of feel the presence of their child mm. around them. There was a family and, and, and the young boy died of leukaemia and um, I remember seeing him at his own funeral and he's oh like, oh, I'm free. This poor boy had spent so many years in bed yeah. and, and so many different medications. And everybody at the funeral was crying because of this very young boy. But I remember seeing him and he just showed, he was glowing and full of light and he was smiling at me and I was smiling at him and it was so, he felt so free. And there was beautiful angels with him. Mm -hmm. There was beautiful support and love. There was so much light with him and he was yeah. running around going, I'm free, I'm free, because yeah. he had been in so much pain. So yeah. that's the beautiful side to it, but often, you know, when you're grieving, you can't imagine that, you know, I mean, a lot of parents know that there's a heaven or that there's a higher dimension, but this, the grief can be so overwhelming oh, that they cannot, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Mm. So in terms of, I guess we've talked about you, you know, at a certain stage rejecting it in your life. Mm. Was there a point when you kind of embraced it and just went, well, this is how it is and I need to work with it? It was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. I had a situation where my, the palms of my hands were constantly burning. Okay. And I didn't know why. They would just heat up. And um, I ended up seeing um, back then a medium and because I just didn't know what to do. And she said to me, you have this natural gift of being a healer. And so she taught me to send the healing out to hospitals or to anyone who was sick. Um, and so at that point in my life, there was an inner knowing that this was something much bigger than what I could perhaps comprehend at that time yeah. and that there was some sort of journey there um, to my life. And so that was a turning point in my life. And from that point on, I remember joining um, the spiritualist church that I was attending because I needed to be around people that could guide me and, and help me to understand my gifts and Absolutely. yeah yeah so I spent quite a few years there and that was um such a turning point in my life because I'd met other like-minded people mm. I met mediums and I stayed on at the church and dedicated um quite a few years there of and ended up running my own meditation and teaching other people and helping them to you know develop their own gifts and mm. doing platforms giving messages giving readings, giving healings. Um, and so after that, as I, as I grew spiritually much more aware, much more able to, to develop my own skills and develop my own way of doing things and understanding my skills, I asked my guides, I said, I really want to do much more than just doing readings because I felt there was already so many people doing readings and I was so intrigued by the spirit world 
But most of all, I was very drawn to those lost people that mm. were in, you know, still kind of stuck in. stuck in the spirit world that was stuck in between this reality and, and the spirit world. And why why do you think they, sorry to interrupt, but why, why do you think that they get stuck? Like why, because I mean, uh, my question is, is like, you know, if you die and there's a wonderful higher dimension to go to, why would you stick around here? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Good like, question. So um, that, that, that there's so many reasons for that. One of the most, um, the, the most reason that I would say is that um, each person um, in their physical life, whether it be they're part of a religion, whether they're atheists or don't believe in anything, a lot of what is taught to them is that when you die, that's it, you're dead. Right. Oh, and so... When a person dies, if they haven't prepared themselves to meet their final moment, mm. then they will naturally cling to what is familiar to them. Yeah. So the physical world, their home, certain people, their families is what is familiar. Mm. So they will cling to that wow. and ignore the light, in, ignore the, 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 their guides or family on the other side. Um, that are trying to get them to cross over and make that journey to the other side. So it's like denial. Oh yes, absolutely, because they haven't prepared themselves for that final moment. Yeah. Yes, yes. So that's why they end up feeling quite lost and 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 they're in a state of limbo where they're just walking around and trying to, like that man from school, find their way home, but they mm. can't quite fit into physical reality any longer mm. because they're not physical. Yeah. Yeah. And so I wanted to be able to help these these spirits, these souls, because um, I remember how distressed and upset they were. They were. So my own guides, my own sacred soul family, took me on many journeys and taught me about the different dimensions and the journey of being able to help these souls and cross them over and help guide them to the other side. Mm. So. I spent many years doing that and helping and talking and so that led me to kind of helping um, more, um, doing more of the rescue work that I was doing right. at that time. Mm. And also people were coming to me for healings and often they would have like a spirit attached to them or a spirit following them. So I was able to help them to cross over and so to help the person in spirit that was lost and also the person that, physical person that needed the healing. Okay, okay. that's, that's... And that, I found that so, um, so satisfying because there was a real need. There was just, there's so many lost souls on our planet. There's so many people who um, die and have no concept of the spirit dimensions. And so therefore they are so stuck. And sometimes a spirit, a soul can be stuck here for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And that was the most you know, amazing thing. Time ceases to exist when you die. Mm -hmm. So even though a hundred years have gone by, for that spirit that's been roaming and lost, it can be like a moment to them. And often a spirit will be just stuck sometimes in that moment of their death. So whether, for example, it's a car accident or where they've had a heart attack, they keep re-experiencing. Sounds that awful. It is. And that's why I really wanted to help them. Yeah. So, uh, and release them from that final moment so that their spirit yeah. can feel freed. Yeah. I, I, I can see. So, so was there an age where you were kind of like, I'm going to go into doing this as my job? Like I'm going to like... Yeah, that would have been sort of a time of the spiritualist church because a lot of that, okay. a lot of people would come um, and want to see um, people like myself and, and, and first of all connect with a family member that perhaps had passed away or they would come saying, I just got this feeling someone's following me, or I've got this spirit at home and I can't seem to get rid of it and mm. it's making me scared. So um, th th that was a way I could help people on a much more profound level. And I, I just enjoyed that more than, like I love doing readings for people, but I really loved this work because I felt this was 
deeply needed. Yeah. And yeah. it was an area I found that a lot of um, healers, mediums didn't really want to tap into so much. Mm. 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 So essentially you've spent the last few decades doing that. But uh, also, because I know you've written a couple of books. Yes. One is called The Australian Ghost Whisperer. Mm. And you've talked a lot about your experiences in there. Because, yeah, besides what you've mentioned, you've done things like you've cleared haunted houses. This is the one that's going to freak people out. You've dealt with possessed people and you've done exorcisms. Um, your stories kind of like run the whole gamut. Of, I've pretty much done everything there is to do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I guess what's exciting is, is that, you know, we can talk about all of these experiences in future episodes because you've got some yeah, incredible stories to tell. Thank you. And it would be a great honour to share my experiences because I feel that there is so much um, that people can learn by um my personal experiences with the spirit realm. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be really eye-opening for people to uh, to, to hear uh, your story. So, uh, yeah, so look, we will wrap it up there and uh, we will be doing future episodes where we cover a lot of the stuff that we spoke about today. So we'll be going into more detail about some of the amazing stories that Katarina has shared with us today. Uh, but until next time, we'll leave it there and we ask that you uh, like, comment, share, whatever on uh, whatever platform you're listening to or watching us right now. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to more eps. Thank see you, Kat. See you soon. Thank you. Yeah, see you all soon. See you soon.